Hi friends, I'm Anna Hellman. Thanks so much for being here today. Today I'm really excited to introduce a collection of products to you called Fitting Floor. It's a special release available today, uh, the day I'm releasing this video, and it's not in any of our catalogs. Now, I'm excited to share it because I have lots of card ideas to show you. Uh, I'll be sharing nine different card ideas with you. I'll actually be demonstrating how to make three of them, and they each have different techniques that you could try at home in your craft room. Let's take a look at it. I'll quickly share the products I'm using and then let's get to all these card ideas and techniques I wanna share with you. So here you can see the frame floor at stamp set. This is the main stamp set I'll be using here. The coordinating dies are called framed fl florets also. And let's take a look at these dies real quick. Uh, I love the large ovals, the big frames. And as we go through my card samples, I'll show you lots of different ways you can use these. What's really neat is when you cut one, you end up with several pieces that you can use, uh, either two or three in most cases, uh, pieces that you can use. And then we have the dies that coordinate with the leaves and the flowers also. This paper right here is just beautiful. It is called Fitting Florets. And then we have some little gold gems I will be using on some of my projects. And I have one more stamp set that is part of this special release. It's called Framed and Festive and has really nice large greetings for Christmas. So I wanna share a lot of different ways you can use this. And like I said, a few techniques and ideas you can use on any types of cards when you're crafting. So what I wanna show first, I'm gonna demonstrate a few things here. I wanna show a fun way to use the stamps. I wanna show a fun way to use the dies that you may not think of. And then I'm gonna show something with that Christmas stamp set. And then when I'm done, I have six more card samples to show you using these products. So I hope you'll stick around and see what all, everything we are going to create. So here I have a piece of cardstock in my stamp apparatus. This measure is four by five and a quarter. It's the right size to be a mat for one of my cards. And I've already done to, done this technique twice, but I wanted to do it a couple more times and share with you what I am doing. Uh, stamps like this, like these flowers, are just perfect if you wanna stamp them and color them in. But I know some of you don't love coloring. Some of you don't wanna take the time for that or maybe you're in a rush to make a card. So I wanted to show a way to use stamps like this, but do it quickly and not spend all that time coloring. So here is what I'm doing. I have my garden green, I'm sorry, this is old olive, old olive ink pad. I have a sponge dauber here and I am going to ink apologize about the reflection. I'm going to ink just the part of the stamp that is the leaves. Okay, so I wanna stay away from the flower. Now it's inevitable, I'm gonna get a little bit of ink on that flower probably, and that's okay, it's not a big deal. If it overlaps a little bit. Uh, so I've inked up the leaves. So I'll go ahead and stamp over here. If you don't get a great image, or if you wanna try it again, make it a little bit darker, you can, of course, since it is mounted on the stamp apparatus, it'll be in the exact same spot the second time. Now what I wanna do is the same thing with my Poppy Parade ink, but this time I am going to ink just the areas of the flowers. Now, after I have this stamped, I am going to use my sponge daubers to fill in that color. So you'll be able to see that here just in a second. Okay, so here you can see what that looks like. And I could leave it just like that. Uh, it just adds a really nice touch from if I had stamped it just in one solid color. So you can leave it like that if you like, or what I've done on my other samples without adding any more ink. I already had plenty on my dauber. I'm lightly tapping over that flower to add some color. You should be able to see, I'm getting more of like a speckled coloring. Now, if I wanted that to be more of a smooth, even coloring, I could just swirl, swirl the color on instead of dabbing and I should get a little bit different result with that. I'll add a little bit of color to my leaves. 
And then I've done this. It may be a little bit difficult to tell, but I'll show you. I actually colored the berries on the stamp, a little bit different color. So I'm bringing in my Blackberry Bliss marker. I'm going to color those six little spots that are berries on the stamp and stamp one more time. So what I noticed on this example, it doesn't show up a ton. You could probably see it a little bit, uh, but if you use lighter colors and then a little bit darker color for the berries, it may stand out a little bit more. Okay, since I, I'm gonna do this corner again here so you can see this one more time. So since I already had that ink on for the berries, I'll go ahead and do that step first since it doesn't really matter what order I do this in. So there you can see those berries a little bit. Clean that ink off and we'll do the flowers first this time. This is a really fun technique. I've showed this before with more solid stamps uh, where when you stamp a flower, you basically have the whole flower colored in. But I don't know if I've shared it with a stamp like this before. So I thought, this would be a fun thing to share today. And last but not least, let's do those leaves again. And this is something, since that stamp stays in the same place on the Stamparatus, I could come back in and actually add some shading. So if I wanted to use a little bit darker color of green or darker color of red, I could just pop a little bit of that, let's say onto the edges of the leaves and stamp one more time to get some more color variation, which would look really nice too. So we'll fill in those leaves, fill in the flowers, and we will turn this into a finished card really quickly here. So I have my card base prepared in Poppy Parade. We'll go ahead and mount this on there. And I have a greeting prepared. Really like the greetings in the set. Here you can see some of them amidst the reflection there. So really like this is a nice one. Wishes for a beautiful birthday. I like greetings. I love greetings that take up a little bit more space on my cards. When you have those greetings that take up quite a bit of space, makes a little bit less work for you to figure out how to decorate the rest of that card front. Okay, so there is the base of my card. I have a piece of twine prepared. We'll add a little bow here. And I may come back in and add a few of those pretty little gold gems here sometime. Okay, so here you can see that fun technique and how you can add multiple colors to that stamp without actually having to color them in with markers or pencils. Okay, let's take a look at my second card idea and a second technique. And this is, I thought this turned out really fun. Uh, the idea popped into my head for this and I'm really glad I tried it out to see, to see the results and also so that I can share it with you. So this card is not using, not using the majority of the stamps from the set. This one is completely different. Okay, I brought in the Peekaboo Farm stamp set for this one. I wanted to create a card with these little cutouts from these oval dies. And I was thinking of something cute that would be fun to have popping out a little cutout. What is cuter than these little peekaboo farm animals? So here is what I have done. I'll share with you what I've done so far and then we will assemble this and see the finished result. First, I die cut this particular die. Uh, I'm gonna refer to the oval dies when I'm talking about these as, there's three oval dies in this frame floor, it's die set. So there's, I'm gonna call this one the large frame, the large frame. And then I have the small one, the small oval, and then the larger one here, we'll call that the heart die, okay? 
So this is the small one. I cut the small die. Now when I cut this out, I end up with an outer frame with the oval cut out that I could use for something else if I wanted to. I end up with this piece and I end up with an inner frame that looks really nice. Now this one is a different color, uh, but it leaves a little embossed edge, which looks really nice. You know, I think I have the wrong one, but this one, this one has that inner piece as well. So what I wanted to do was create these little cutouts where the animals are gonna be peeking out from behind, okay? So what I did, I die cut this oval piece, I cut it kinda close to in half, it's not exact, and I laid these pieces onto a piece of four by five and a quarter white cardstock. I outlined the inner part with a pencil then I, this piece up here, I cut out already. I'm gonna do this one right now while we're watching. And I want to cut inside a little bit, or is that outside? I believe that's outside, okay. So I wanna cut on this edge of this just to make sure that this piece doesn't show when I add the frame piece on top, okay. Once you have this done, if you want to stamp your greeting directly on this piece, you wanna do that next probably. And if you're going to emboss it, you will want to do that next, okay? So then you will have this piece created and you'll have the areas in the background you can decorate with whatever you want, the Peekaboo Farm stamp set, something else if you like. I think we need a little bit of grass here on this card. So what I have done to prepare the animals, I stamped them with early espresso ink and then I colored them in with my watercolor pencils. I didn't use any special techniques with the watercolor pencils this time. I just colored them in and I really like how they color. They color really evenly and I was able to use that white one for the cow. I thought it turned out really nice. I also used that white one underneath. I, I used it under the noses and then I added a little bit of color on top so that they would stand out a little bit. Now if I'd stamped on white cardstock, I wouldn't have had to worry about that, but anytime you stamp on something a little bit darker, you may wanna add a little bit of white before you add those other colors just to help those other colors stand out a little bit more. I hope, I hope that makes sense. I feel like it's about as clear as mud right now, but hopefully that made sense. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of grass that filled in some of that space. I think that looks nice. Let's go ahead and attach this piece to the card and We'll see this one all finished. The embossing folder I use for this is called Brick and Mortar. It is one of my favorites. I love that it makes the bricks, certain bricks pop up a little bit more than the other ones. And you know how dimension really adds so much to your cards. So here on the back of my frame that I die cut, you may be able to see that there was something stamped on the back of this. Uh, believe it or not, my projects don't always come out perfectly. Shocking, I know, right? Uh, but if I stamp something and it doesn't work out or I don't end up using it for my card, I often save those pieces and flip them over and use the backside for something else. So that is what was on the back of this little frame piece, okay? So I added some of my dimensionals. When I get down to the end of my dimensional sheets, I cut the little, the long strips on the end. Uh, I cut those up and use those little narrow pieces for things like this. So now we have the cute little frame popped up around the sweet little farm animal. So there's card number two. There's a fun way to use the dies. Now, let's look at a fun way to use the Christmas stamp set. And I'm going to need my Stamparatus back in here for this. So I'll show you what I have prepared so far. Uh, this is a fun idea to create a cutout card where when you open it up, it actually has a cutout all the way through the front and you can actually see the greeting 
or the decorations on the inside before you even open it, okay? So what I did, I took my card base, measuring five and a half by eight and a half, folded it in half, mounted this piece of designer paper. This is from the Bowels of Holly designer paper pack, measures four by five and a quarter. I mounted that onto the front. I ran this through my die cutting machine with that small oval frame die in the center here. I cut out that large frame die from some Evening Evergreen, Evening Evergreen ink. I was going to call it the wrong name. Cut that out. It is ready to be attached right here. And then we are going to do some stamping through the front so that you can see that greeting through. Show you how I attach a lot of my detailed die cuts and this just might not measure up to some of your standards, but this is what I do. And in our own craft rooms, we, we, we are each the queen or king of our craft rooms, right? We get to do things the way we want. There's nobody there to argue with us. Maybe that, is that why we like our craft area so much? Because like, usually nobody is there telling us we're supposed to do something differently. I don't know, maybe that's one reason. So I just add little bits of this glue. This glue works so well that even if you only dab, have dabs in a few places, it typically holds and it holds really well. So having the white on white makes this a little bit hard to see. So I could lay this over some darker cardstock and it would make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing, but we will make do. I think we got it, okay. We have that attached. Now I want to, I could stamp this just with an acrylic block, but I wanted to show you that this is the right way of doing it, my friends, because if I mess it up with my acrylic block, I do not get a do over. And now that I have all my pieces put together, I do not want to mess this card up. So lay that where I want it. I have the foam mat removed from the base since I'm using one of my rubber cling stamps, okay? We will stamp this with some I'm debating. Let's use some Evening Evergreen. And it's a good thing I did that because I'm that looks okay, but I believe I need to re-ink my ink pad and it's not quite as dark as I would like. That looks much better. Okay, so let's take this off. Let's see what it looks like. And if we want to, we can add a little bit of decoration to this. And I believe I will do that. So I'm gonna bring in this little leaf stamp. This is one you're gonna see on my six more card ideas. I'll show you here in just a second. This is one I really like just for some non-specific decoration, okay? Since this is a Christmas card, I didn't really wanna use like the regular flower stamps. They didn't look like poinsettias to me, uh, but this leaf stamp is perfect just to add a little bit of decoration, okay? So there's a fun way to use one of the Christmas stamps. Now let's take a look at all of these other card ideas I have. And I'll bring them in one at a time, just share a little bit about them. This, I just love the paper in this set. So I have a couple that are kind of just highlighting some of that beautiful paper. This one I kept really simple. This is the inner piece from that small oval die. Stamped the greeting. Stamped, this was the long narrow flower stamp. This one right here, I just stamped straight across the top, straight across the bottom, add a couple little gems. I popped up that oval and this one came together really quickly. This would be a very simple card to duplicate and make several of if you like to make several cards at a time. Here's another one. I, like I said, I really liked how after I cut out these frame dies that I had leftover pieces, the outsides and the insides. So I took this one, I embossed it with the fern embossing folder, used my blending brushes to add a little bit of color, and then stamped on that lower piece of designer paper, added a ribbon, 
and I thought that came together nicely as well. Here's the one where I used the frame that I cut out on this one, added it to some of that pretty designer paper, added a little bit of gold foil paper on the edges. I just love to use specialty paper and just tiny bits like that can add so much to a card. And then I cut out that beautiful leaf die cut to add right here. So here's three. Let's look at the other three. Here's one. I, I really like to keep cards simple and creating backgrounds with your stamps is a really fun way to create nice and simple cards. So I use the flower stamps. Here's the leaf stamp. Here's that small flower. And then this is that larger flower stamp that I demonstrated on the stamp a little bit ago with the different colors. I use those three, stamp them repeatedly across the background. I die cut that small oval die out of this designer paper. I mounted the centerpiece straight to the card and then I popped up the frame so that it stands up a little bit. Stamp that greeting, cut it out, popped it up and added a few of those nice small leaf die cuts. Okay, I haven't showed you any samples with that really fun big heart die yet. So here's one. Cut it out of this lovely designer paper. I uh, added one of those inner oval pieces that I stamped with the long narrow flower stamp. Added a greeting, cut that out with a circle, and a cute little double bow to finish that one off. Last but not least, I thought this one turned out just lovely. Soft succulent is one of my favorite colors. I'm gonna be really sad when it disappears here in a few months. So I had a mat for the front of this that measured four by five and a quarter. What I did, I tore off the edges at an angle, tore this one off, flipped it over, tore this one off. And then I used that stamp that looks just like this, uh, stamped a couple times in the corners, used my blending brushes to add a little bit of color. And then this is kind of a fun little technique you can try with greeting stamps. I really like that little one that said, just a little reminder that you are loved, but I didn't know if just one of those on this card was going to be enough. Thought about stamping it on a tag and adding it. I thought, no, I think I want to keep it right there on the base. So what I did, I just stamped it once and then without re-inking, I stamped it again. And you may be able to say, see, you can barely see a third time here. And then I did the same thing down here once, twice, and a third time. I thought that looked really nice. For this decoration here, I actually used the dies in the designer paper and I cut these straight out of the paper. I love, love, love when dies coordinate with designer paper. And this is a set this one coordinates. I believe these also coordinate with the dies so you can cut them straight out and save yourself lots of time and effort with stamping and coloring and all of that and have beautiful pieces to add to your projects. So lots of card ideas. I hope you enjoyed seeing these. Now I've got links to all the products I've talked about in the video description below. I'll mention really quickly, if you're curious, I, I mentioned that these are all special releases, uh, early releases. So what's gonna be available? How long is it gonna be available for? So that you know that. The basic bundle, this and the die set, is an early release from our next mini catalog, which will be coming out in January. I'm trying to get the dies. They're stuck to my Stamparatus magnet. Has that ever happened to you? So the bundle is an early release from our next mini catalog. It should be available through that catalog period, which doesn't even start until January. So that's available for a little while. Uh, the designer paper, the Christmas stamp set, and those lovely little gold gems are all while supplies last. Uh, in the past, things like the papers and the gems are known to disappear rather quickly. Uh, so if you love the idea of die cutting some of those papers out, you may wanna pick up the paper or even several of them uh, as soon as possible, to, just in case those would happen to run out. So thanks so much for watching along. I hope you love these ideas and the techniques I shared on these three cards right here. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.